So recently I did a crazy thing. I walked into a Verizon store and I told them I wanted to get a different device. Um, a woman asked me if I wanted an upgrade and I said, well, not, not really. I, uh, you might even call it a downgrade. I want to uh, trade my nice iPhone for what I have now, which is a flip phone. And she looked at me like I was crazy. She went ahead and, and processed it and, and let me do that. But she was very like, I asked her if anybody really comes in and does that. And she said, no, um, can't say that anybody has. She said um, she had like one example that was uh, somebody who was really struggling to pay their bill and downgraded. But she's like pretty much nobody. Um, so this video, I just want to talk about, you know, why you would do that and most of all I'll just frame it with 10 reasons you think you need a smartphone but you actually don't so reason number one is so you can check your email more so this is one of the first things that popped in my head when I was like I'm gonna go get a, a dumb phone as some people call it I'm like well I gotta check all these emails for work so I thought about that a minute and generally when people send you an email it's for um, you know, respond within a day. I don't often get emails that require me to uh, respond that exact moment. Usually somebody's going to call you or text you. So this is really not a reason that you need a smartphone. Uh, I think some people might, there might be some jobs where you do, like if you're out in the field all the time and, and you need these really, there's these emails coming in all the time. But for most people, if you're working nine to five and you're sitting at a desk, you've got the internet pulled up. And then if you leave, um, maybe some emails pile up while you're not at work. But if you really want, you can check them after dinner or before bed or you know on your computer. So it's not really necessary. Um, to have a have a smartphone just to check emails all day the second reason you think you need a smartphone but you don't is google maps and Waze and apple maps and all those you know kind of apps that you'd be totally lost without them um what i did was just buy a garmin gps you can find them used online for like 50 bucks and you get free lifetime life of that device access to maps that are constantly updated it connects to the data for the garmin um, system and it updates and you just get one of those put it in your car you know when you're driving around it'll tell you where to go reason three you think you need one is you have all these awesome audiobooks and podcasts and music digital entertainment the auditory digital entertainment and this is actually one that I was, I was really struggling with because I, I really there's some podcasts I really like, especially like audiobooks on this free app called LibriVox, where you can just listen to all the classics of literature. And I feel so smart when I just you know plow through something like Moby Dick or you know Charles Dickens book uh, David Copperfield. I went through it took me a while to get through that one, but when you do, you're like you feel a sense of accomplishment, and and there's nothing bad about that per se just going through all this um, literature and all that but in reality you don't really need to do that and most of what I listen to is a waste of time it distracts me um, I think a lot of the time it'd be better if we learn to be silent with our thoughts and to do one thing at a time because a lot of the reason we're scatterbrained is we try to do so many things at once where I'll try to do some project that's kind of complicated, do some carpentry thing, and then I'll have some music on that's distracting me, um, or I'm listening to an audiobook, and I have to kind of pause that, think through my problem, and then unpause it. And in reality, it'd be better just to um, do one thing at a time and kind of allow that space in my day where I can have thoughts, reflect on what I'm doing, be present. Um, and if you do need some audio entertainment, um, I think you can figure that out, you know, in other ways. If you really want to listen to an audiobook, you know, maybe you can figure out a way to to get it some other way. But I don't think you need that as like a distraction and a temptation all the time because it can be a way you'd spend hours of your day. 
the fourth reason you think you need it is social media. And, you know, I don't think we need much social media at all. I think Twitter is just a way to give you a monkey mind that's jumping around, distracted, one tab to the next, this person's comment, and then what did this person think about this story? It's like, you know the story of the thing that happened. You know that this person is a conservative or a liberal. So you can probably guess this person's going to be upset by it or this person's going to like the thing that happened. It's a waste of time to look through Twitter for that reason. And then other apps um, are largely just a distraction where you're just like, oh, Aunt Becky went to the you know Cayman Islands. And then here's another picture of her. And a lot of people spend their time like that or looking at Instagram, things like that. Things like TikTok or Snapchat, which are just ways to just get flashing lights in your face and just get hit by a bunch of dopamine that you're just scrambling your brain you know (laughs) none of that's really worthwhile i think there is there is something to be said about a limited facebook presence just um if you need to contact an old classmate if you need to share with some people um you know your child was born and here's a bunch of Keep pictures of it. A limited presence, but I think that can be done on the internet. You don't need a smartphone for that. Reason number five you might think you need it is Uber and Lyft and other things like that. But there's actually ways that you can get around this as well. There's there's phone numbers you can call for. I think it's in a lot of states that you can call a number and get Uber. <laughs> they have like a phone number, so you don't need the app. Also, you can just call a taxi. A lot of the taxis are scrambling to make themselves more efficient and, and better in a lot of ways. And that way you're you're helping a local um, taxi service that isn't kind of plugged into this big tech um, cabal, you know, that some company in San Francisco, like Uber or Lyft or wherever they, I think Lyft's in San Francisco, Uber's probably somewhere else. But, um, but yeah, they don't need to take every industry. And if there's some local, locally owned taxi cab service and I can just hit the numbers and call them, you know, they're doing a lot better than they used to on time and all that because they have to because they have a lot of competition. Reason number six you think you need one is pictures. Um, I think there's something to be said about taking some nice pictures of your family and posting them even to Facebook every once in a while. A lot of that is done way too much. You know, you're sharing 30 pictures of, you know, your day when you went to the movies or something or to a park. It's like, your your second cousin and your best friend from first grade don't need to see that. Um, you can take a couple pictures here and there. You, you buy yourself a digital camera. This uh, flip phone has a camera. It's not like the best thing, obviously. You might want to get a better one, but you can take some good pictures of, of things. But by always, you know, you're thinking you're missing out if you don't take these pictures. Like there's these moments that you're not going to have. You're actually missing out on those moments if you're always like trying to get the perfect picture and then looking at this and, and posting it instead of just being in that moment and experiencing it, appreciating it, appreciating that moment while you're in it. So that's another thing I don't think is is a big deal. Reason number seven is banking. You might think I do all my banking on there. I see what my balance is. I see you know what I bought and, and when and where and um, you know, I deposit my checks that way. That is one I do like. I deposit my checks um, on my banking app. Is that going to make or break you having a smartphone? You, I'm assuming, get out and about sometimes, and you can deposit your checks when you're when you're out and about. You can check your balance online. I can, you know, I don't need to check my balance to see what I spent. You know between 10 and noon, I mean, I'm probably going to remember that. It's It doesn't need to be updated and, you know, I don't need to check for updates all day. So it's another thing that's kind of, you can just do every once in a while. It doesn't always have to be at your fingertips. I think that's a lot of us. We think all of this stuff has to be known every, every minute, every update, something could happen and I would just need to know it. Um, you know, if you want to check your bank account every night, on your computer, you can probably do that. Number eight, the weather. Um, I think this and a couple other things where you just really want to know, like the traffic, the weather. The I've never been one of those people, to be honest. I kind of live in the moment, but I uh, 
I know the weather when I go outside. I know the traffic. Um, same way. I think there's there's some utility in, in knowing traffic. Um, there's probably times where it would have helped me um, to know, oh, this road, is, there was a big accident there. Um, I can often tell a ways back if things are starting to back up in a way that I usually don't, and then I'll take another route. But um, I think if you really want to, there's, there's a lot of um, news stations that will give you the traffic and the weather. And, you know, let's say the night before or a couple of nights before, you can look out a few days and know that, okay, it's going to be whatever. So you, if you really want to know that, you can figure that out. For me, that's not really one that I uh, affected my decision at all. The number nine reason you think you need a smartphone but don't, I'm going to just call the general internet. These questions pop in your head all day. You know, you're just like, um, you know, I have a baby. Uh, and there's all these questions that just pop in my head. And you know, how long does the average person wait before, you know, switching from breast milk to formula? You know, my wife is interested in knowing that. Or, you know, these things, You we have all these books on it, but you might just want to, if you Google it on your phone and then you just swipe through a hundred mom blogs, then all giving you the opposite. There's so many varying views on things like that. You can waste a lot of time on that. But I think for me, it's, you know, I, I might, some idea pops in my head and I was like, Oh, you know, what, what is that? The answer to that, that's a good way of just constantly getting yourself down rabbit holes. Now that can be useful sometimes. Like if I'm in a town, I'm like, what's the, the best restaurant in, you know, whatever town. I could probably find something like that quickly. Um, but for the most part, like where I might save a little time or effort on those kind of occasions, there's many more occasions where I'm wasting a ton of time going down rabbit holes where I have some random thought and then just decide to pursue that. And <clears throat> it's really not... Uh, necessary and actually if it is totally necessary I don't have a lot of data this thing comes with just the most minuscule data you know but I could google something and I would get it would take me probably five minutes to type out what I needed but it, in, in a pinch you know if it's really necessary if, if, if we're talking emergencies is the reason you're thinking you need it um, they have a little internet app there that you know it's 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 almost <laughs> not worth having but that's that's part of the reason to get that phone is it's not going to really help you but in a pinch and the tenth and last one um the reason that you think you need the internet but you don't is games now i'm not a gamer at all i think i got semi-addicted to uh online chess because i like chess and it's really easy. You know, I've always loved it if somebody else played chess and like, oh, let's play a couple games. And that, that doesn't happen very often. So online chess, you can just, some guy, you hit start and they hit start. Some, and it's just like person with the closest score to you um, at that exact moment you're matched up with. So you're really, there's not even like a wait. You just hit it. And then I'm playing some guy in Zimbabwe now. And the game's just started. And I really like that. I can play it on my phone. Uh, and I've had to, like, take breaks from it. <laughs> Cause, so I have the capacity to get pulled down those kind of rabbit holes, not to overuse that term. But um, rarely, I, I think I'm not really um, pulled into that in the, in the way that a lot of guys are, where a lot of guys have, like, 40 different little games they're playing. Um, they have their their game systems at home that they do on TV. They have their computer games. Um, they have their phone games. They have just all this stuff. And I think that is, I mean, maybe it's easy for me to say because I'm not into the games, but I think mostly that's a total waste of time. You could argue that there's some benefit to your uh, hand-eye coordination, I've heard people say, or your creativity, or maybe you can like semi-socialize you know, oh, my college buddy and I play this game. How much catching up you're really doing? Or I know, you know, people are going to hate me for saying that, but I, I see that kind of thing is mostly a waste of time. You're just using your time to hit your dopamine, 
you know, bump it up just a little bit more. And, and at the end of your life, you're not going to be thinking like, oh, I wish I played more gods of war. That would have really made this whole trip on this, this planet just so much more worth it. You're probably going to wish you would have found a wife and had a kid or two or three and, and worked a little more in your career. So I think that kind of uh, time is, is better spent. So I don't think you need your smartphone because you're going to miss out on some app of like Candy Crush or I see people playing that and other things like that where they're just their kid. I, I do something called Muay Thai a bit. It's just like a, it's kind of like what they use in, the, in MMA, but I see some of these parents. Uh, there's a kid's class right before the adult class I go to and the parents are just sitting there doing these games like Candy Crush while their kids like learning and hey, watch me, dad, and dad's just not paying attention. So I think that's just kind of pathetic, in my opinion. Um, so there you are. That's that's my 10 reasons that you think you need a smartphone but don't. Um, I got rid of mine relatively recently, so maybe some of these will, will really hit me later. Maybe the email one will become kind of an inconvenience or um, I'll really start missing some podcasts. I have the GPS in my car, so... I don't think, you know, Google Maps is going to be difficult, but otherwise I think this was a really good move. I think even those things aside, maybe they'll be inconvenient a little bit, but I can already tell I am more present. I'm not, I can pick up my phone for a second and I'm like, oh yeah, what am I going to do with this? Sometimes I get a text, um, but you know, I don't feel like texting people back because it takes me forever. <laughs> so I just call them. Um, and most, most of the time I don't really need to say as much as I thought I did or when you're texting, I can just be like, that's great. I'll, I'll see you at the thing. And then when I'm at the thing, we're still friends, even if I didn't have some long text to them. Um, so I noticed I'm more present with my daughter. Uh, I would kind of, you know, I'd be feeding her with the bottle feeding her and while I'm sort of checking my email and, and looking up something, it was all probably like. I had one spam email and then some random thought I was looking up. Like it's not important, but I can spend more time. I've noticed I picked up my guitar again. I used to love guitar. I used to be, that was like my thing back in, in middle school, high school, even into college. I was, I was really into that. And then I don't know, at some point I just sort of just faded out of, of that, but I just picked it up and started playing. And it wasn't even like I was thinking I should start doing this again because now I have more time. I just, spontaneously did it um i do notice a little bit more just peace like there's a little bit more time in my day where it just magically appeared kind of and the reason for that that i have all this extra time all of a sudden i just saw um a survey with the different generations and and i'm a millennial just barely almost on gen x but um people in my generation were spending 5.7 hours per day on their phone and baby boomers aren't a lot better it said five hours and then the youngest generation gen z i think it said yeah gen z they're spending up to 10 hours on their phone looking at their phone i mean some of that is is maybe being let's say an hour of that they really need to, to be doing they're, they're wasting a ton of time so all of a sudden i just have a lot of time and i'm really not seeing what i'm missing out on to be honest so I recommend doing it. I recommend people just go and this one's pretty good. It's called a Kyocera um, Dura XV Extreme. The Extreme is just because it's like you could throw it against a wall and then leave it in the cold and dunk it in water. It's meant to be like a rugged phone. I didn't really get it for that reason, but it's also just a lot of people rate it as the best flip phone. The charge lasts for like five days unless you're doing a lot on it. Um, you know, it has a nice little email app. It has a little, you can do group messaging, which is key because there's a lot of flip phones where if you're in a, a group, each message will come in individually. It won't be in a group. It'll be like one person's like, that's funny. And the next person, you get a separate message. Like I disagree or something. So it's, there, there are some of these dumb phones that are a little bit better and those things that you think will be frustrating. They kind of work that out but you're still saving. I don't spend even half an hour on it. I mean, I text people and 
each text <laughs> takes a little bit of time, but it doesn't add up to half an hour. And I do a couple other minor things on there maybe. But so I recommend um, if you want to kind of lessen big text grip on your life, if you want to um, create a little bit more of peace and, you know, a little more space in your day, um, give it a shot. Maybe, uh, you know, it's something that you can do. And I'm guessing some of these, some of the reasons you think you can't do it are the 10 that I just said, and, and maybe my uh, rebuttal to those 10 wasn't convincing, so you still think you need it. Maybe you do for, I think there are some jobs where like you would need it for email. Like if you're, like I said, out in the field and people have to reach you by emails for whatever reason, rather than a text or a call. But um, for the most part, I think pretty much everybody could do that. So that is all. And uh, let me know what you think down in the comments on whether you could get rid of your phone or what reason would prevent you from doing so. All right. Thanks a lot.